Hi guys and welcome to the Sunderland vs Hull City match review. Now I do apologise that this is quite a bit late. I, just, I was just really, really busy over the weekend basically. But uh, better late than never, eh? Even though it is really late. But Sunderland did, of course, lose on penalties against Hull in the first round of the Carabao Cup over the weekend on Saturday. Uh, it finished 0-0 at full time. Um, now, before I was actually going to leave this bit sort of, sort of towards the back end of the review, but I'm just going to say it now. Uh, so basically after that game finished, of course we did lose on penalties. Um, there was a sort of hour period on uh, across social media, Twitter in particular, uh, where I just think there was a lot of unnecessary sort of negativity hurdled towards the team and the performance and everything, which I just didn't really get. I feel like if anyone could, of course you can be disappointed, of course and everyone has their own opinion, but I feel as though people who were slating the team and this, that and the other, although bear in mind it is a bit of a minority of people, but for that first hour I saw a lot uh, and I mean a lot of negativity towards certain players and the performance in general, the manager. Um, and I do feel like it was unnecessary. And I think people who come away from that game feeling overly negative, I feel like they didn't watch the game. There's no chance they could have watched the game because for me, that's the best I've seen us play in a hell of a long time. And if anything, I came away from that game thinking, you know, I've got a lot more faith in the side that, that this season than I thought I was going to because we absolutely battered them. We battered Hull. Bear in mind, Hull are a team who I expect to be there and thereabouts towards the top end of the table this season. Uh, and we absolutely ran them ragged. The only thing we didn't do was score a goal, which is, of course, it's a necessity to win football games. You have to score, of course. That's, that's the obvious. But um, but, but we, oh, that's all we did wrong. We just didn't manage to hit the back of the net. I think on another day with a bit more fortune, we would have been out of sight by half-time. But th that's all the way to really just get out of the way, really. I just feel like there was a lot of unnecessary negativity hurled towards the club by certain people. And... It was really unwarranted, in my opinion. And I did, to be fair, I did say that on Twitter. And then I kind of left it at that because I felt like it was getting a bit toxic. And I didn't really go on Twitter for the rest of the day after the game because it was just, it was ridiculous, in my opinion. And luckily, you know, I've noticed a lot of people did agree with me. It was just a small handful of people that I don't know whether they watched the game or not because I think we played really well, like I say. But we'll get into the review. Um, so we started off uh, with, of course, our normal system with three at the back and the wing backs. So we had a Burgeon goal. We had Flanagan, uh, Bailey Wright and Jordan Willis as the back three. Oh, nine is the right wing back. Hume is the left wing back. Now, for the central midfielders, we had Power and we also had Dobson. Now, when I first saw that, I just thought, oh, why has he dropped Scowen? Scowen's been one of the best performers, one of the better performers uh, throughout pre-season. I thought, why is he, you know, if, I thought if anyone, you know, why would he, why would he bring Dobson in for Scowen? If anything, one should, could have been dropped, it could have been Power. So I just thought, why has he done that? But anyway... Uh, Dobson ended up being one of the best players on the pitch before uh, you start having a pop at me because Dobson for me was probably man of the match but um, but yeah, so it, it was a right move in the end but I just felt as though Scowen deserved to start the game 1000% and then um, up front we had uh, Maguire, Grigg and um, we had O'Brien as well so it was pretty much one of our strongest starting 11s but of course like I say my first impression, I was just a little bit annoyed because Scowen got dropped but anyway so we get into the game and literally within 20 seconds, you could see that we were right up for it. Hull had the ball across the bat line. Immediately, Will Grigg is chasing him down like a frigging hound dog, I'm telling you. And it did, definitely did not look like the Grigg that we've seen over the last couple of seasons. He was busting a gut. And he did that throughout the game, to be fair. Right in the faces. The high press was clear to see. And he nicked the ball off him literally 20 seconds in down the right-hand side. Puts it across goal. Ends up being a bit of a scramble. Comes back for power, who tries to hook it to the, um, the left-hand side of the goal. It was cleared off the line. That's 20 seconds in, and we're already having... Shots cleared off the line. I thought, Jesus Christ, we're going to go for it here. And then we literally had the ball in the whole half for pretty much 70-80% of that first half. Um, so many good chances. We had a disallowed goal from Will Grigg, which I think was questionable. Um, one of two disallowed goals, which we'll get into in a bit. But um, yeah, there was a bit of a scramble in the box. To me, it looked like in the replay, Grigg may have pulled down the keeper before the ball did come to him and he nodded it in the back of the net. But again, it was very 50-50, but I could also see maybe why the referee would have disallowed it. So, But that was disallowed. Um, but I don't know whether it was actually because he was judged to have fouled the keeper or there's also been, I've seen a few people say that it might have been because it was a handball from 09, which is in the build-up to the goal. I don't know, but there's a couple of things there that were certainly 50-50, whether it should have been allowed or not, it's arguable. You don't really know, but we had plenty of other chances. One chance where, again, it was pulled back nicely by Hume. Hume and uh, Grigg had two shots uh, blocked. Again, Hull on the back foot, defending for the lives. Eventually, come back to Maguire, who he really should have finished it off. He had the whole right-hand side of the goal gaping, but he tried to sort of nonchalantly just hit it into the back of the net with the outside of his foot, and he's made a right cock-up of it, should I say. Yeah, and, it's, uh, and it's gone wide. 
Um, but yeah, so, so by this point, it could have easily been 3 0. Some really, really good chances made. O'Brien as well, with uh, one of the best clear cut chances of the game. And I'll just say now, O'Brien looked absolutely fantastic for me. His hold up play was very good. Um, and he was getting back, he was tracking back, he was making really good challenges. And there was actually one moment of magic from him, which uh, I absolutely lost my shit at. I was like, Jesus Christ, we haven't had a play like this in ages. He pretty much picks it up, sort of halfway into our own half. And he beats three players with some absolutely frigging gorgeous skill. Um, but uh, I just thought, Jesus Christ, what kind of plays this we picked up? So he really did it excite me. Some really good technical touches. He looked really, really good. But he did have a chance himself, which he at least, at the very least, should have worked the keeper. Nice football. Works back down for O'Brien down the right hand side. He's coming in from right to left. He's cutting in. That's sort a of di diagonal on goal. It's a bit of a hard angle, uh, it, you know, to sort of beat the keeper. But I would have. Probably wanted him to maybe try and tuck it away at the near post, but he's tried to drag it into the bottom left-hand corner, and it's gone way wide. But um, but yeah, those were sort of more notable chances of the first half, and uh, all again, Hull didn't offer anything, really. Uh, we had an answer for everything. Um, we were defending really well. Everything they threw at us, we dealt with. And when I say everything they, they threw at us, they really did at all throughout the entire 90 minutes. In fact, Burge, throughout the entire 90 minutes, didn't have to make one save, and that was it. I think there was only time they really... Bothered us. I think there might have been one or two set pieces where they did win a header or something here and there and it went way over or way wide. But other than that, we had him silenced. And we had him in our back pocket throughout the majority of the game. But the second half comes on and uh, we uh, it was pretty much the same. It was just more chances. There was another disallowed goal um, for Will Grigg. Ball was worked nicely down the right hand side. Pulled across goal, tap into what was basically an empty net and it was judged to be offside. But on the replay, again, it's another 50-50 one. But for me, it looked like they're right back. Had, um, I think it was is it Emmanuel, I can't remember his name, but it, it looks as though he did actually play Will Grigg on side, but I just think with the motion of playing, of course, they don't have VAR to look at, you could understand maybe why, and it did kind of look like he was offside at first glance, but then looking back again, for me, I think he could have easily been onside there, and I think the VAR, if, it had, if we did have it, maybe, just maybe would have saved us, because I do think um, it could have quite easily been onside. So again, that's another opportunity. Um, we're still making chances. The only thing I think towards the the sort of late stages of the second half, you could see that, we, well, we were desperate to score. And we, again, we, we, con we were so continuous with the high press and we eventually, look, we looked a little bit tired and I think because our defence, our back three had such little to do throughout the entirety of the game, there was a couple of times where Hull did break on the counter and, and I think we were just lucky that the decision-making by some of the Hull attackers on these counter-attacks were poor because there was, a, there was one time where... We obviously, we literally had almost all of our plays in their half, and all they had to do was hoof it away, and it was like two on two at the back, and I think Wilkes um, was bringing it forward down the right-hand side. They had a, a striker coming down the centre who was completely free. I mean, And if he just passed in the ball, he would have been one on the keeper and could have quite easily scored against Burge. But uh, luckily, Wilkes just held up the ball, took age and allowed the runner to just run off sides. So I didn't pass it to him. So I think that was just one little concern, is if, if we are going to be dominating the game in this way, um, then we need to remain switched on at the back uh, because it, it was clear to see that they kind of just switched off all three of them. Uh, they kind of just disappeared and all it took was one hoof. Um, so we need definitely to be careful of that. But again, other than that, they didn't bother us at all. Now, when there was about 20-odd minutes left, um, you could see, again, it was getting a bit more stale, but again, all, almost all the play was was in the whole half um, and we were making chances. Um, O'Brien had one over the bar. Maguire was putting in really good balls. We were winning balls in the air, get headers over wide, and we were just peppering him. And I love to see that the confidence from the lads. And I know a lot of people were moaning, and you know, I suppose to an extent, rightly so, because we just weren't putting the ball in the back of the net. It's frustrating, and I think the level of finishing on show was quite poor. But I'd rather them have a pop at goal than not, because there've been so many times where if we are sort of controlling the game a little bit. It's so frustrating when we're playing one of those games and it gets a bit stale and you bring it to the final third and we become very guilty of trying to walk the ball in the back of the net and no one and everyone sorry is afraid of shooting so they just kind of pass the ball around the the opposition box no one shoots and eventually we'll just hoof the ball in and it eventually goes to no one at least nothing um, but but the lads seemed brave and they really wanted it and they seemed hungry it just we just didn't get that look of the draw but now like I said it was about twenty minutes left or so. The substitutions were going to be made. That was always going to happen. O'Brien came off. You know, Gooch came on. White come on as well. Um, for me, I think those were the wrong substitutions. Um, for me, we definitely just needed that little bit of spark and creativity in there, just thrown in. I know Gooch can provide that at times, but I do think that we should have 
brought Neil on. That was that was the one real criticism I do have of Phil Parkinson. It was screaming out for someone, even just for the last 15 minutes, just to come on and just have a real go at him. And we've seen Dan Neil in pre-season. Granted, we haven't seen loads of him, but in pre-season he's been very creative, very bright. And the game was starting to open up because we've been right in their faces the whole game. It, anything could have happened in that last 15 minutes because all we needed again, we needed that little bit of spark and we just didn't have it. So it would have been nice to see Neil get on the pitch. But it, it finished nil-nil. And overall, it, again, I, I was very, very happy with the performance. And on another day, it, we could have been 3 or 4 nil up at half-time. The game would have been long gone. We were, I believe we were that good. Um, but yeah, it's, got, it's gone to penalties. And I was watching, I even said to me, mate, you sat with I said, there's literally no point now. Sunderland don't win penalties. And it, it, it's done now. And of course, that, that proved to be the case. Will Grigg missed his penalty. Um, and Hull scored all of theirs. I mean, you could maybe say Birch could have done a little bit better on some of them. He made it quite easy and quite slow to get down to the corners. But again, it's, it's another sort of look of the draw thing, isn't it, when it comes to penalties. But all in all, I was actually very happy with the performance and I was very optimistic coming away from that game. Whereas, you know, normally, even if we did play well and we lost, particularly if it was a league game, I, I think I'm probably being a bit more forgiving because it is a cup game. But because of the context of that and that we were playing a team who were going to be there and thereabouts this season we performed the way we did and dominated so much I, I am happy I'm very happy with the performance and again my man of the match for me is Dobson he was an absolute workhorse in there he absolutely dominated them every time they tried to break through the centre Dobson was there he was just battering him hitting him hard clean challenges but, clear, but hitting him hard not taking any prisoners and he was just brilliant. He was absolutely brilliant. He was quite forward-thinking as well. He was really useful in recycling possession. And again, his defensive work was outstanding. Um, yeah, so I give Dobson man of the match. If it if it weren't Dobson, if Dobson didn't perform the way uh, the way he did, it would have been Greg. Because for me, Greg just looked. He was phenomenal as well. Uh, he really stuck to the high press, and he just would not leave their back line alone, which I absolutely love to see. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it, guys. Um, again. I don't think the neg negativity was warranted. A few people saying like, "Oh, you're same old, same old Sunderland." I, I, I don't, I can't agree with that. I literally can't agree with that at all because it's not same old, same old. Because I don't think there was any game I can remember last season that we dominated a game in that fashion and created so many chances at the very least. Um, so it 100 percent wasn't the same. I understand the frustrations, but you know, I think some people just need to cut the bullshit. Do you know what I mean? If you're, if you're frustrated, you're frustrated, but I just don't think the negativity is warranted, to be honest with you. Particularly just before the first game of the season, next weekend, I don't think that was warranted at all. And and some people going on personal attacks on Grigg for missing the pen when he hadn't put a foot wrong all game. Two offside goals, which is unlucky. Of course he missed his pen, um, but it, that can happen to anyone. Um, so I hope Grigg does, you know, keep his head up and just keeps going because it was fantastic other than that penalty miss. Um, but yeah, of course, uh, Tuesday being tomorrow, we do play in the EFL Cup, which again, or well, EFL Trophy, whatever the hell it is, where I think uh, Parkinson is just going to use a young team, which I think may have been influenced on not playing Neil or bringing Neil on. I think he probably will start from the off on Tuesday tomorrow. I keep saying that because I keep forgetting it's Monday. Um, but yeah, so I, I do think we're going to see a very young squad tomorrow. Um, and then hopefully, and everyone will be fit and refreshed and ready to go. And I hope we do keep that intensity for Saturday's opener against Bristol Rovers because if we play with a high press and we attack the way we did but hopefully just have a bit more luck on our side we'll absolutely blow Bristol Rovers away and I'm very confident of that which I didn't think I'd be saying after or, or, or before the game on, on Saturday but yeah all, all in all I, I am positive I'm very positive about that game so you guys let me know in the comments down below what you thought of the game and if you have enjoyed this video please hit the like button for me it'd be massively massively appreciated and subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully fledged member of the Sony Army but for now you take care and stay Jump!